way to Rocky Mountain House National Historic Site is our first time there and it's the perfect getaway for Calgary and Edmonton as it's right in the middle of the two cities. Yeah, and another reason why it's the perfect getaway is because they also have camping options and some unique ones. So we're going to be staying in a trapper's tent. And we've brought the whole family with us, our little dog Maya, my mom and dad as well. So five of us. <laughs> uh, but before we go there, we're going to make another stop at a unique provincial historic site. Which is our first time as well. So we just arrived at the Stephenson house, which is right behind us. So this is the original house and we're gonna go in and learn more about it. So welcome to Stephenson House Provincial Historic Site. Where we are right now is the home of Stephen G. Stephenson, the famous Icelandic poet and farmer. And he's well known as the poet of the Rocky Mountains. Is that right? That is right. This right here is the original wood stove that the Stephensons had, and this would have been $25 in 1902. Oh and we still use it today. Oh, it's like the fire in that piece. Here's the oven where we can bake. And look, they have fresh cookies here in the kitchen that they were baked in the original stove. We've been touring the house for a little bit and it's quite dark because of course back in the day there was no electricity so they're trying to keep the house as original as possible and actually 80% of the furniture is original. Another interesting fact that we learned here is that they actually used to use newspaper as insulation not only on the walls but also in the floor and a lot of these are actually they were found in the floor, so they're actually original newspapers from different parts of Canada. And uh, yeah, it's really cool to see something like this. There was already like lazy ab machines all the way back then. <laughs> So we made it to our campground here at Rocky Mountain House National Historic Site and one of the things that makes it unique is you can rent teepees, trappers tents and cabins. We're staying in a trappers tent which is made out of canvas, kind of like what they would have stayed in back in the day. And then it comes with a little table on the inside, two beds with mattresses so you just need sleeping bags and whatnot. But what's cool is it comes with this kit. So you get all your kind of pots and pans, wash basin, you get an axe, cups, oil, spices, but my favorite part are these three things. So it comes with bannock mix so you can, and an instruction book how to make bannock. It comes with trapper's tea, the tea they would have drank. And this is going to be difficult, but it comes with flint and steel to try to start the fire the old-fashioned way with sparks. So we're going to try it, but might have to resort back to our lighter. So the fire pits here are communal. Our neighbors got the wood ready, so we're going to try out the flint, rock, in the same way. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, did you see that? <laughs> <laughs> Didn't work, it's very hard. I don't know how that guy did it. Just a small spark and it's a lot of work. So we're going to go to the modern way with the lighter. Alright, so the menu for tonight, what we have? Rib, beer. Well, it's dark now, so it's pretty much time to go to bed. It's been an awesome day though. We had, we, get, we arrived, we had supper, enjoyed the fire, but we got to get up and explore the site tomorrow. So. Good night. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. We're all nice and ready because there's actual 
shower and bathrooms here but now it's time to try the rustic labrador tea after two to four minutes look the water is still clear but it smells good and tastes good Today we're exploring Rocky Mountain House National Historic Site, a beautiful area and a great place to learn about the fur trading that used to occur here, the indigenous peoples of the area, as well as David Thompson, who is known as the greatest land geographer of his time. And a good place to start is right at the visitor center. They have a museum there where you can learn more about the history of this place, but also some virtual reality and interactive activities. But then you can grab a map and do a self-guided tour of the area, which is what we're gonna do right now. Hello and welcome to Rocky Mountain House National Historic Site, one of the major trade and cultural crossroads of Western Canada in the 19th century. Bon voyage. So right behind me, as you can see, these are the original chimneys from the forts. That's pretty much all that remains now of the archaeological site because all of the forts and buildings, of course, were built with wood. And when they left, the people who lived around this area, they came and took the wood because they could still use it. But they couldn't take these. So. One of the reasons why this trading post was built here was because of its proximity with the North Saskatchewan River as they were transporting goods up and down the river on York boats. So other trading posts were using indigenous canoes but these boats, even though they were seven times heavier, they were able to carry twice as many goods as the canoes and also they were more resistant and they needed less repairs. So we've made it to the Métis camp, which basically takes you back to what it would have been like in the mid-1800s or so. We get to see how they would have lived, how they would have set up camp, and I've heard they've got some really tasty bannock. <laughs> it's easy to spend the whole day here this place is huge and they have so many interactive activities and this time we're gonna learn how to do a dream catcher okay how's going Matt all right well I'm almost done the most tedious portion which is putting this leather around the loop but just two inches left so I can't believe this, but Matthew is better than me. He's almost finished and I actually need some help. All I need is my three feathers. And I'll have better dreams from here on out. <laughs> and last but not least, we're here at Follow the Herd. So this is where we're going to learn how they would have set up camp when following a bison herd. Obviously much different process than where you call home. So what's that? So, you're just saying a lot of people wouldn't know about these, but this is the one they probably would have built when traveling around, following animals, because it's uh, much lighter to just carry the sticks and then to find the branches and stuff like that. You wouldn't have seen like canvas tents, because that would have come from the Europeans later. Yeah, this is really authentic. Matthew, you're, you're your father's son, so you should be good at this. And I'm wearing the lumber jacket. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh. so we're ready to try the vano kit that came into the box in our tent. So this is how it looks like. 
And it also has all the utensils. We are just using our own Tupperware. So Kathy is ex the expert. She bakes all the time. And we watch before how the lady at the Mady Cam was doing it. So, yeah. So you make a well. So here all the ingredients are already pre-mixed in this bag, which is salt, baking powder, flour, and sugar. So you make a well. Then you put a little bit of oil. It says here to do four cups of, uh, how many? Three cups of cold water. Okay, so we're gonna pour this into our large greased frying pan, like so. So then you just put it on the fire and it should take 30 to 45 minutes. This is it. It didn't turn out as good for us. Here, I'll give you another. The turn fire up. was too high. I think the fire it was burned. either too hot or too much bannock, I don't know. But. but we're trying to rescue some of the pieces, the crispy pieces. They're not that bad. Definitely taste <laughs> Our plan was to have bannock for dessert, but it didn't turn out as good as nope. we wanted. A little bit burnt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not that easy. And we're getting a big fire going on because it's a little bit chilly right now. But so. now we're going to do some s'mores. Yeah, no camping trip would be complete without s'mores, right? And we know how to do those ones. <laughs> yeah, those but, ones are easy. I know. But yeah, this is our last night and it's been a, a cool experience. We definitely would uh, recommend it for anyone. Not only could you get to kind of live the lifestyle, I mean, definitely a more modern version Top of it, trappers, yeah. but you can also walk to the National Historic Site from here and learn all about an important part of Canada's history. Yeah, it's an awesome place. They do a great job explaining the history back then. Lots and, of actors. And, and it's like awesome that. to see it, like with the actors, yeah. But anyway, we hope we inspired you to do a small road trip like this and visit this amazing National Historic Site. So if you like this video, give us a thumbs up. Hit subscribe. So you don't miss out on any other videos coming up. And visit our website at mustdocanada.com.